Orfsen, a new standard being proposed by the OpenID Connect Foundation for providing a standard mechanism for doing authorization. For years now, SaaS-based products have had the opportunity to externalize uh, authentication using OpenID Connect and OAuth, allowing you as someone who purchases a cloud-based service to basically take control of identity in terms of saying who's authenticated, who can have access to the platform. Unfortunately, there hasn't been a standard mechanism for authorization. So each of those SaaS platforms have had to build their own mechanism for doing authorization. It's not beyond reasonable to expect you as a user of a SaaS platform to not only want to provide the authentication side of things, but you also may want to control, take control of authorization, allowing you as an organization to decide how you decide what people can do in that particular SaaS platform. So Wolfsen is a starting point for this. It's the ability to standardize the way we ask authorization questions. Can a user do a particular task? In this short demo, I'll show you how the Orphzen protocol works and you'll get to see it working with our enforcer-based product. So in order to play around with Orphzen, we need some kind of authorization engine. I'm going to use our enforcer product. That's what I'm going to base the demo on. Um, an authorization engine needs some kind of policy in order to base authorization decisions against. I'm going to take the policy from our enforcer.identityserver.com example. And we're going to use this policy to execute in the context of Wolfsen. Quickly looking at this policy, it's a policy that controls access to a main door. Can you open it? Um, you have to be an employee and you have to be in working hours. We look up here, those snippets is employee basically means you have to be a member of role employee. In working hours, I've extended it a little bit to eight o'clock just because that's when I'm doing this, this recording. Um, but effectively, we'll control access to that main door as long as you are an employee and it's inside working hours. Okay, so let's just drive this policy through the REPL first before we actually dive into the Orphsen protocol. So in order to be able to open the door, I need to add an attribute which is going to be um, of open, effectively matching the action. So I'm going to add that. And then going to add another resource, which is the resource type, which is going to be a door. So I'm going to set that inside here. And we're going to add that. Um, we also need to set the current time. Well, we're just going to say the current time is 1918. So that's good. Um, so we should have all that done. Um, and then we also need to add a role. Yeah, so we'll say role is employee. So let's go and add another one, add that attribute. Um, so that's going to be role. I'm going to say employee, click add. And I think we're probably left with, I don't know, I think we've done everything. We've done, oh no, we haven't said type of door. So let's go and set that. So the resource type is going to be the main door. Add that. Door, whoops, capital D. Let's go and add that. Okay, so now we've got a set of attributes that define our, our request. And we're going to say run the door access policy. And we're looking for permit to come out here. And sure enough, we get permit and we get the full diagnostics of how we came to that eventual conclusion. So the decision logs effectively of how we came to that conclusion. So we know our policy works. And if I was to go inside here and change that from employee to say maybe contractor and now execute it again, we'll get deny. And effectively, if we scroll down here somewhere, we should see somewhere where it's going to say yes. So evaluated expression subject role equals employee now to false. Okay, so we have a policy that seems to work. What we're going to do in a second is we're going to move that policy into a piece of code and we're going to execute that against Orphzen. Okay, so we want to basically make that policy that we just defined in the REPL on enforcer.identityserver.com. Basically, we're going to execute that using the Orphzen protocol. To do this, I've created a very simple web.net core application and enabled enforcer. So that's our at Rockstar Knowledge policy authorization engine, added enforcer, told it which is the root policy, which is the global.alpha. This is the policy that we had inside the REPL that we looked at before. And going back into program.cs, in order to make this work with Orphzen, so in order to listen to the protocol, we need to enable some middleware. And we do that by simply doing app.useEnforcer Orphzen. So let's go to the console here and just do .NET run. And hopefully now we'll basically end up with something that's listening on port 
5001 on HTTP, which we should be able to execute an auth send request against. So today, we're just gonna try and execute um, an authorization request against that PDP that we just stood up using Postman. So you get to see the raw um, payload in terms of how things work in terms of auth send. So at the moment, we've, uh, we've just got an empty um, JSON payload. So auth send at the, currently at the box, supports JSON. So if I was to send that to the evaluation endpoint, which is access slash v1 slash evaluation, and say send, I do actually get back a response from the auth send middleware just saying false. But there was nothing really to base a dis authorization decision on, so it said false at this point. Okay, so let's start building up what the auth send request looks like. So auth send has a schema along the following line. So when we make an authorization request, we need to say who the subject is that's actually making the request. So who's the authorization on behalf of? We then need to say what the action is. What is the action that we're attempting to do? In our case, is open the door. Okay, so we have an action. We then have something called resource, the thing we're acting upon. So we've got a subject, the person doing the thing, the action they're wanting to get authorization for, and the resource the action is being uh, acted upon. So those are the three core parts. There is another part called context, which we'll come on to in a bit. But these are the three main ones here. So in terms of a subject, um, I have to specify what I call the ID. So who is doing it? And I'm just going to say here is andy at rocksolidknowledge.com. And I have to say what type the subject is. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to say it's, it's a user. Okay, so we could imagine it could be a trusted application doing it, it could be anything, but in this case, we just say it's a user. The action is then going to have a name. And in our case, the action was to open the main door. Uh, and then resource, well, we're going to have a type. And there is the type of the resource we're acting upon is a door. Whoops. And the other thing is an ID and it's going to be main door. So those are the three parts um, that we definitely need to send. If I was to send this now, we're actually going to get deny because if you remember, our policy said that it was based on time of day, but also whether you're in role employee. At the moment, there's nothing here that says, how do we get to that role employee? So if I was to send this now, I get back a decision of false, okay? So if we were to look at our decision logs um, from inside the trace from where we're running the application, we can see that the is employee and in working hours is set to false. We're, at, we're inside the working hours, it's just the employee bit has basically returned false at this point. To resolve this issue, we could add some additional properties about the subject. So what we can do in AuthSend is provide some additional information about the, about the subject. There's no schema for this. So ID and type is required by the AuthSend protocol, but properties is a bag of stuff that you can provide, which is up to your authorization engine to actually understand. So in my case, I'm just gonna add something called role, and I'm gonna add an array, and I'm just gonna say employee. So now I'm providing a bit more information to the authorization engine to say it is Andy, um, and he's our member of actually role employee. So if I was now go to execute this, we get back a decision of true. And if we were to have a quick look inside Visual Studio Code Logs, scroll down right to the bottom here, we can now see that is employee and, and in working as is now set to true and hence we get the permit. So while you can provide additional properties here about the subject, which can be useful, um, something like role, we wouldn't expect the policy enforcement point, the person making the request to Wolf Zen to specify role access to what level of role a, a user has. That's something that we'd expect the authorization engine in order to go and find that information out as part of the policy evaluation. And so what we're going to do is we're going to remove that from the request. And then we're just going to basically jump back into the code and we add a single thing here that basically tells Enforcer we want to add an, another policy attribute provider. And this is something called subject record provider. And that's simply a piece of custom code that I put together, which knows how to map from a user, so the subject we sent over the wire, to a set of roles. So this is a, 
uh, a PIP sometimes it's called, so a policy information point. So when we're evaluating the policy, if we suddenly get to an, a require an attribute that we currently don't have from the authorization context, we'll then execute some code that will go and find it. Currently, I've just hard coded some values, but this could easily just be go off to a database and fetch that information, and we could cache it and do various things. But effectively, we're now getting that information not from the authorization request, but for some policy information point behind the scenes. So um, flicking back to program.cs, so let's confirm what we've done. So we've added that um, provider. So if we were to save that and dotnet run this time, and off it goes, hopefully. And if we then flick back to Postman, back in Postman now, we should still get true because Andy was in role uh, employee. So if we go and execute that now, we get decision true. If I was to change that to Rich and execute it, Rich is not, is, an, is a contractor. Press that and we get decision false. So this is basically using an authorization request that has some bits of information to make the authorization decision. And then we're relying on Enforcer's policy information point architecture to go and enrich the environment for the PDP to make its decision. Okay, so the final thing we want to talk about is this extra section that we can have in the of Zen requests other than just subject action resource, but something called context. This is really a property bag again of any additional information that the the person making the request, the PEP, thinks might be relevant to the authorization engine when making a decision. Okay. So at the moment, Rich can't open the main door. Now if the building was on fire, we probably do want Rich to be able to open the main door. So I'm going to add an additional piece of uh, information here, some context. So this is the, the fourth section. And inside here, I'm simply going to add something, a flag. So building is on fire. And I'm going to set that to true. Right. So we're going to provide some additional piece of context. Now, that's not going to have any effect at the moment because effectively we haven't done anything to the policy engine to know anything about this. The authorization says, sure, you sent me that information, but I, I don't know how to apply it. So if we go back into um, VS Code, we can extend our policy. So what we want to do here, perhaps, we need to define an attribute to base this decision on. So this is in the alpha world, the language that we define our policy in. We're going to define an attribute called uh, uh, building is on fire. Okay. Um, and we're going to define that as with an ID. And we'll come to what that means in a minute. A type, which in alpha world I'm going to say is a Boolean. That's good. And we have to define a category. And that's going to be environment cat. So attributes in alpha have an ID a type and a category. So you can define custom categories, but there's some baked in subject category, resource category, action category, and environment category. Environment category maps to any attribute that's defined inside that of Zen request called context. Okay. In alpha world, that attribute is called building is on fire. But in the of Zen request that we sent over the wire, we call it building is on fire. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to place that inside here. So now we have an attribute in the alpha world called building is on fire that is bound to a of Zen attribute called building is on fire inside the context of the request. Okay. So I should now be able to say, well, you could open the main door if you are an employee and it's working hours or building is on fire, okay? So you should be able to now open the door if the building is on fire. So if we were to save that, um, and let's go and restart the process. Uh, let's get in that, and I do .NET run. Hopefully that's gonna start running in for us in a second. That's up and running. Then flip back to Postman. And if we've done our job correctly, this should allow Rich to open the door because we said the building is on fire. So we press send and we get back true. If the building wasn't on fire, false, press send and he can't open the door. Okay, so you've seen offset in action, but what does it actually mean in reality? 
Well, the great news is this is a stand that's been worked on for over a year now. And it's proud to say that we've now got 18 policy decision points um, that can support the Orphsen functionality, which means as SaaS providers start to adopt Orphsen, there is already a huge ecosystem out there of standard-based authorization engines that those SaaS providers can offer to you as a person who consumes that SaaS solution, just in the same way that you pick your own identity provider using OAuth and OpenID Connect. And the other great news, if you're trying to basically control access to APIs using a authorization engine not baked into your code, great news is there are seven API gateways that now basically support Auth-Sen. If you want to know more about the um, working group uh, in terms of who's there, who's basically adopting it and doing that thing, there's a whole pile of QR codes at the bottom of here that you can scan and then jump to understand a bit more what's, what's happening basically with Auth-Zen. Um, like you see, loads of vendors up there that are all supporting this new protocol. So from this talk, if you want to play around with Enforcer, go to enforcer.identityserver.com. The middleware version of our Enforcer product supports of Zen will be available very soon, but it's available in preview too if you want to have a play around with it. Sample code available in GitHub. So go and again, pull that down if you want to play with it, modify it, see it work in your own environment. If you want to know more about Enforcer, get in touch with me. Very happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much.